Also in part 3 I'm gonna start with some more Nintendo Game & Watch games from my collection. And the next one is this one right here, Mickey Mouse, another Game & Watch game, this time from the widescreen series. It's also an LCD game that was released in 1981. And yeah, this one I have with the box and this is the original Japanese release. So let's take a quick look at the box. And here on the back we have some advertisements for other Nintendo Game & Watch games, Parachute, Popeye, Octopus and Chef. And here we have also the, um, yeah, the sticker uh, Walt Disney Productions, since yeah, basically Mickey Mouse uh, belongs to Walt Disney. And this was some kind of a collaboration of Nintendo and uh, uh, yeah, Walt Disney Productions. Now in here, here we have the batteries. Now those aren't uh, the, the, the original batteries, so at least the guy from who I bought this game uh, replaced or uh, let's say put in some other batteries. And I mean the main thing why I know the, those aren't the real batteries, number one I would say that first, uh, yeah this calculator, um, well it could be but in the end I don't actually know which company, uh, from which company those batteries are and if you look on the back I mean you can see that those were from some of those uh, battery bundles that you can buy or battery packs where you have a couple of pairs of those batteries but in the end those are the, the, the real or better let's say the, um, the right batteries those are LR uh, 43 batteries and since this game is also made in the year 1981 uh, the Nintendo Game and Watch games from the year 1980 and 81 they need the LR or SR 43 batteries and from the year 1982 on they uh, switched to the LR uh, or SR 44 batteries. Now I also have here the manual it's complete uh, sorry, it's complete in the Japanese language, so we can just, yeah, okay, so quick look at the manual and here we have, uh, yeah, some kind of caution she sheets or but let's see here you can see how you can set the alarm and also the time and I actually don't know what this is, maybe a coupon or I have no idea. But normally you would also have some kind of caution cards. So for instance, yeah, you should not drop some uh, fluids on them or eat them or whatever. But in the end, yeah, this is the game. And yeah, basically you also have two game modes, game A, game B. Then you can look at the time, you can set the time and the alarm. And basically what you have to do in this game, you play Mickey Mouse and you have to catch the eggs from the chickens without, uh, if you don't catch the eggs then they will fall to the ground, they will break and then you basically lost a life. And here you can see 1981 and LR or SR. 43 batteries should be used with this one but like I already mentioned in part 2 you can also use uh, the LR44 or SR44 and those are the only ones that I have right now so I'm gonna use those to show a little bit of gameplay. I'm gonna choose game B because game A is super easy and yeah game B is easy so And there is Minnie Mouse. Okay, but now I'm gonna let one break. Now we come to the next lap, and if one of the right ones break, then normally a chick, uh, baby chicken walks away. Okay. Last time I played it, uh, <laughs> a baby chicken was. Yeah, okay. Now it's going away. So, yeah, this is basically Mickey Mouse, and here you can see also Walt Disney Productions is also on. 
uh, the Nintendo Game and Watch game and also here we have Mickey Mouse. It's another very nice uh, Nintendo Game and Watch game, also very basic slash simple game, but in the end, yeah, like almost or barely actually all the Game and Watch games in my opinion, it's a very nice game. And yeah, in terms of collecting, I think it, those are very awesome. And yeah, let's just put it back. And one other thing about those batteries, uh, yeah, normally they would not, uh, if those were the, the, the original batteries, they had their own batteries. I don't know which company, uh, from which company they used the batteries, but in the end they wouldn't have those sharp edges. I mean, a child may, can hurt himself or uh, uh, a child can hurt itself by um, scratching the skin or whatever. So this is something that normally, yeah, normally you wouldn't have this in uh, as original batteries. And again, if you look on this, I mean, let's see if the camera focuses. Yeah, it was ripped from, from one of those battery packs. But anyways, it's cool that there are some batteries inside. Okay, and Next I'm gonna show you another game that I actually have boxed, but uh, again this the other one This one right here Helmet uh, is only box the the inside the story phone inside and I have the manual and the game But what's cool about this one is as you can see it's a Trickotronic This is one of those games that was released by the uh, German company Bienengräber and it is mentioned, is it mentioned right here? No, on the other side. Well, here we have it. From the company Binnengräber Hamburg, so from Germany. And those are the games that were released in Germany and also in Austria. And here you can see they uh, made a different box and also they changed all the names because there is actually no mentioning at all that this is a Nintendo game, otherwise it's a Trickotronic game from the company Binnengräber. And the game Helmet, so like I also mentioned in part 2, Binnengräber didn't uh, change anything on the handheld itself, only the box and they changed the name for the manual and everything, so the original name is called Helmet. But in this case it was uh, changed to Vorsicht Werkzeug, which means translated uh, caution tools. And if we look here on the back, you have some advertisements and also some, <laughs> well, let's say, um, you can say screenshots of the game helmet. But here we have some advertisements of the game Lion, which I showed you in part two. And this is called the Löwe ist los, <clears throat> which you can basically translate to the lion is loose. And here we have the game uh, manhole and it says Achtung Graben uh, yeah which you can translate to caution holes or yeah but basically caution holes and but anyways yeah this is the box and now let's open up the box it's not in the best condition I mean as you can see it's ripped here on this side there are no batteries inside and here I also have the manual and somebody uh, wrote his high score on, on the manual and here again Vorsicht Werkzeug, Caution Tools and yeah, here we have the manual, how to insert batteries and yeah, a little bit of the gameplay and here we have the Game & Watch game and yeah like I mentioned, there's nothing changed on it from the company Binnengräber. Also, this one is from the year 1981. It's also an LCD game. And also, this game should be used with the LR43 or SR43 batteries, but also the SR44 and LR44 work on it. And basically, what you have to do, you're a little guy and you try to get inside the house because outside there are a lot of tools that are falling from the sky and you try not to get hit by one. And you also have game mode A, game mode B, time, you can set the time and the alarm. So let's put in some batteries and let me show you some gameplay. I'm gonna use again game B. 
And you also have to wait until the door is open, otherwise you can't enter the other building. And every time you enter the building, you get a couple of points. Five points at least in game mode B. It's it's closed. Open up, open up, yeah. <laughs> and at the beginning, you had some kind of a safe spot, and uh, as soon as you ah, stepped outside or after uh, some time, the guy would walk outside on its own. So this is, you can't pause the game in the end. So <laughs> okay, and yeah. My little guy died. Uh, yeah, another really nice, simple little game that I'm very glad that I have in my collection, uh, especially because of the box and with the mail and everything. But yeah, this was another game from my Nintendo Game and Watch uh, electronic handheld game collection. And next, I'm gonna show you another one. I can close this. Yeah. So now the next one that I wanted to show you is this one, boxing. This is a micro versus system game from Nintendo from the year 1984, and yeah, it's another LCD game. Now the micro versus system games there were three of those series. There was boxing, then there was Donkey Kong 3 and the last one was this one, Donkey Kong Hockey. Now what's interesting actually about those games is that, so, yeah, number one, they are totally different than the normal Nintendo Game and Watch games and I'm gonna show you this in a second, but uh, what's for me interesting is that on the handheld games themselves here you can see 1984 and those use now the LR44 SR44 batteries but on the games themselves and actually also on the box they don't mention that those are actually game and watch games even though they count as game and watch games and I also uh, count them as games of the game and watch series and actually also the manual doesn't uh, tell you anything that this is actually a Game and Watch game. But anyways, um, but one thing that I can show you about this one, because I don't want to show you all the games right now, I only wanted to show you this one, but since I have this right now here with me, this one actually has some original batteries from, uh, from back in the days. And uh, yeah, here you can see those are just um, two batteries and they actually have uh, here on the back a lot of different uh, languages and those are Maxell, Hitachi Maxell batteries and here I was wrong they also have uh, a little calculator on them a little uh, um, how you call it a printing of a calculator but in the end those are actually real batteries from back in the days so this uh, just from the one that I showed you earlier, the Mickey Mouse, another um, thing why I don't think that those batteries are actually uh, from back in the days in the case of the other game that I showed you, Mickey Mouse. But anyways, let's come to this one. Now what's really cool about those games, those games were made to be played by two players. And here on the front you can see you have two game modes. Again, like all the other uh, Game & Watch games, you have Game A, Game B, Time, you can set the time and the alarm. Game A is your one player game and Game B is your two player game. And here you can open up the handheld and here you have two mini controllers. And this is very cool. Here you have control, uh, the controller for the second player and here you have the controller for the first player. And here you have the battery compartment. And this is also a little bit different because here you, can, uh, you have to place the batteries in this battery holder and you have to put them here in the right side so you 
have here the positive and here the negative. So let's go in ahead and place them inside this battery holder. <clears throat> Two. And what's also pretty cool about this uh, uh, handheld is basically if you play this, uh, if you play only the one player game, then the hit button or punch button on the second player you can use for, um, for a pause option. And in the manuals it also says that um, if you want to continue your game you can you just have to push the punch button for player one. At least if you play the one player game, then you have the pause uh, function. Otherwise, yeah, in the two player game, you can make a pause if you want. And if you don't push the button after four minutes, the, the game will progress, uh, even though if you don't want it or whatever. And this is also pretty cool because, um, yeah, you actually have a cable and it's the, the distance of the cable or the length of the cable is actually not bad and here on the back you have uh, yet yeah, spindle to rewind the cable and normally I don't know if you can see this because it's not in the best condition anymore but here uh, yeah I don't really see this here you have a little red mark and this is also mentioned right here if uh, you wanna place the controller back inside you have to rewind it until the red marking uh, which is there and then you can put it back again but in the end I'm only going to show you the one player option and here you have a little space where you can put the cable in so, so let's close this in place uh, yeah, but in the end I actually have to open it up because otherwise you can't see the gameplay. So let's take no, this is not going to work. I'm gonna use Wing Commander pr uh, Private here. <laughs> and now, I guess now I can see this game a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, basically it's a boxing game. So, and I'm gonna play the one player option or the one player mode. And yeah, with the controls, now you have here the D-pad. Um, yeah, you can uh, uh, position the fists up and down, so you can either make a high punch or a low punch. Then um, you can also dodge um, if you push on the right side, because my guy is going to be the one on the right side. And you have your punch button. And basically, as you can see here, you have... Um, yeah, your life bar and you also have life points and in the end you start in the middle of the screen or in the middle of the ring and if you manage to um, remove the life bar of your opponent then you move to the uh, to the left side of the screen slash of the ring and if you manage to also um, get rid of the life bar there and if you uh, especially if you're able to um, remove all the life points of your opponent you win the round in the end or you win this box match but again it, i guess it's better if i show you the gameplay instead of explaining how this game works so let's try the best but i'm trying to yeah i guess this is good Stay down. No, of course he doesn't stay down.
round one is finished. Now let's come to round two. Six life points. Now the first opponent is of course not really that challenging, but later on it's get a lot tougher. And there. Yeah, I won. Now this is, for me this is a very very cool one. This is one that I always wanted to have back in the days as a child because I've seen this game so many times in uh, those toy uh, catalogs but I never got it. At one point during my teens I was able to get this one Donkey Kong free I guess from a school buddy. I bought it um, but I always wanted the, the boxy one. Yeah, again, I think this is another really, really cool um, electronic handheld game. Boxing from uh, Nintendo Micro vs. System. And yeah, actually also in terms of gameplay, I think it's a very cool one. It's also a simple game, but in the end I think this is a pretty, pretty cool electronic handheld game. And yeah, another one that I would highly recommend, pretty, pretty cool, and I hope I can get all of this back inside without destroying it. Yeah, boxing, Nintendo, Micro vs. System, an awesome electronic uh, handheld game. And now we continue with some other games. The next games that I wanted to show you are those two King Kong handheld games. The left one is King Kong New York and here we have King Kong Jungle. And King Kong New York it was made by Grandstand and King Kong Jungle was made by Epoch. Both games were released in 1982 and both games are LCD games. Now those two games belong to a very small um, series of handheld games. There were only four in those series, so there was King Kong New York, King Kong Jungle, then there was Mr. Richman and Mr. Woodman. And the interesting thing is that both companies released uh, all the four games. And back in the days I actually had this one, King Kong New York, uh, but from the company Epoch. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the very first electronic handheld game that me and my brother got at Christmas uh, from our parents. So this was one reason why I wanted to have it back, but in the end, back in the days, if I remember correctly, our version was from the company Epoch and it was red instead of green. But one other thing that I wanted to show you are the boxes of those games, because uh, yeah, there's a huge difference. And here I have the box for King Kong Jungle. Now it's a very shiny box, and yeah, here on the back you have the instructions uh, on how the game works and in the end here inside you have this little uh, styrofoam holder so this is basically almost all that came with the game and here we have now the box of the grandstand version and yeah it's at least twice the size of the uh, Epoch version, which I actually think is pretty funny, especially if I show you uh, next the, the styrofoam insert. The box itself, I think it looks very cool. It's also very shiny and it reminds me of the Atari 2600 game boxes from the company Magic, actually. They, uh, they were very similar and here, of course, you also have the, the manual, basically, but in here there's also the, the original manual, so actually you have the manual two times. So let me show you the insert and this is yeah. So basically down here I guess there, there would have been the, uh, the batteries, but I mean this is... For me it's just a little bit of overkill, I mean so much space for just such a little <laughs> electronic handheld game, 
Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little too much, but I think still it's a cool, um, yeah, a, a cool piece, let's call it like that. But anyways, now I've shown you the boxes and now let me show you some gameplay. And we're gonna start with, yeah, let's start with King Kong New York. Both games also need the LR44 batteries. And you have two game modes. You have basically your time also, and you have game mode one and game mode two. Uh, or better said, down here on the bottom, you have game one and game two. Game one is a lot easier uh, because when you play game B, you have your left and right button, so you can move left and right. And with this button over here, you perform the action. So, like you, uh, you can see here. If you step to the left side and you push the action button in game B or game 2, you can uh, destroy the, the airplanes. And if you are in the middle and the, the woman is falling from the sky, you can catch her. If you play game 1, then you don't need to perform those actions. The King Kong will do them himself. So this is basically the difference between game 1 and game two but let's start it and in the end what you try to do is you try to destroy all the planes because the planes want to destroy the building underneath you and if that happens then you fall uh, into uh, to the ground and you also have to catch all the women that are falling from the sky otherwise you also lose uh yeah you lose a life so i'm gonna take the hard route so let's start with Game mode 2. But of course at first it's a little bit easier. Okay, now let I let those airplanes destroy the building so that you can see what happens. And now I lose a life. Oh, poor King Kong. <laughs> okay, yeah, basically this was King Kong New York. For me as a child, this was an amazing uh, game. Me and my brother played this to death. And now let, let me show you. King Kong Jungle and it's the same thing about the difficulty level so game 1 and game 2 in game 2 you have to perform the actions uh, yourself and basically what you have to do in this game is you have to um, yeah, protect this girl while she's bathing in the, the, um, the waterfall and the, the snakes try to bite her so you have to destroy the snakes, let's call it like that, and those, um, yeah, those, um, those wood pieces that are falling from the uh, waterfall, you have to um, pick them up and throw them away, and while you protect the girl, there are also some birds and some of them have coconuts and they try to hit you on the head with those coconuts, so in the end. Both are very quiet, actually, so the noises are not that, uh, yeah, they don't have a lot of noise, or they don't make a lot of noise, so this is actually um, something that you don't find uh, that much. Okay, now I've lost one girl. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's not a very easy one, <laughs> especially if we play game or two. Ah, now then. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna try it again. Because I just wanna show you if you manage to, uh, yeah, secure her shower <laughs> for a little uh, time, then she actually uh, thanks you on the top left 
something that I just wanted to show you. This little animation, if you actually can call it. Like that. So, the stupid birds. Ah. Next time I take game mode A. Hmm. Yeah, right. Sometimes it's actually almost impossible to uh, go anywhere far in this game. But anyways, I wasn't able to show you this little animation. Uh, whoops. Yeah, King Kong Jungle. Also, I think a pretty cool game. I like actually King Kong New York a little bit better, especially because I had this game back in the days. But in the end, both games are very cool. And yeah, I think they're also pretty cool pieces for a collection. Okay, but anyways, let's come to the next one. And now we come to the last game that I wanted to show you in this video series. And that game is Fights of the Titan, an electronic tabletop game from the company Epoch. A game from the year 1983 and it's a VFD tabletop game. Very awesome box art, I have to say. I really like the design and all the, <clears throat> the the artwork on it looks totally cool and I don't know if this is true or not but I guess they were going for a Clash of the Titan themed tabletop game and in the end I guess they didn't get the rights uh, at least the movie rights to, to produce the game that's why I think this game is called Fights of the Titan. But anyways, I can be wrong in terms of that. Uh, here on the back, we can see what is going on in this game. Now, you, you are the hero right here. And uh, in the first cave, let's call it like that, you have to fight four monsters. So you have to fight the Medusa, then a dragon, then this some kind of a spider and yeah this is some kind of a giant bear sasquatch some kind of that and here is some kind of a princess that you have to rescue and if you are able to defeat all those monsters then you come into the second cave and you have to defeat this guy i don't know what this guy is maybe it's a demon it's the devil or some kind of a bad god I have no idea but what's also very interesting about this game is that you actually have a lot of uh, of lives I don't know how much you actually have but I guess somewhere between six to eight lives that you have uh, in the game but as soon as you make it to this end boss one hit and you lose all lives doesn't matter if you have eight lives left or if you only have one life as soon as you uh, come into the second chamber and you fight this end boss as soon as he hits you you're gonna lose the game and what's also interesting about fighting the other monsters is that uh, each monster has to be defeated yeah from uh, um, in a specific order of course because you can only pass the, the Medusa and come down here if you defeated the Medusa otherwise you can't progress in the game but what I also meant was that you fight the Medusa also with uh, bow and arrow and when you come down to those guys you have to defeat them with the sword but you only need one strike so you only have to hit them once to defeat them but you have to defeat them from the right angle so just for an example, if you go down there, normally after you've defeated the Medusa, you try to defeat the dragon. And in order to defeat the dragon, you have to go underneath the dragon and then come up and stab him. Otherwise, you can't destroy him. So this is also very interesting that you have to find the right locations or the right spots to actually attack those creatures and uh, yeah, basically defeat them. 
But anyways, let's open it up and let me show you the tabletop itself. And I also think it's a very beautiful tabletop game. And what I really like... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just wanted to remove those hairs or whatever those were. Um, it has a very simple design. Simple in terms of uh, most of the tabletop games have the same shape. But what I really like is this um, yeah, ancient Greek uh, archi architecture. <laughs> And it looks like um, some kind of a theater is going on. So it, it really looks very cool. It also has a little magnification effect because the plastic uh, on the front actually has a, a little bit of magnification or um, yeah, has this magnification effect. In terms of controls, you have here on the left side your joystick with up, down, left, right. Here on the right side you can either, basically you have your attack button, so for sword and arrow, you can turn on or off the sound. This is also a very cool option, so you can you could play it as a child uh, at night and you don't would not wake up your, your parents. Then the on and off switch, you have uh, difficult selection and you have a start button. And this game also needs four C batteries like most of the tabletop games. And yeah, basically this is the tabletop. Next I'm gonna show you of course some gameplay of Fights of the Titan. Almost made it. And yeah, basically now I lost. <laughs> but I'm gonna try it again. So, Medusa. I have to wait until the spider is finished. Drain. Spider. Squatch three, one, two, three. Hey, cool! Woohoo! I saved the princess. Isn't that awesome? First time and on camera. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, basically, I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah, this was fights. Of the Titan from the company Epoch, a game from 1983, a VFD game. I think it's a very awesome tabletop game in terms of gameplay and also in terms of looks. It looks beautiful and I'm very glad that I own this in my collection. And yeah, now we're at the end of part 3, or actually of my little video series. Some more electronic handheld and tabletop games from my collection. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Maybe see you next time. Take care. Bye!